So you finish your design in Fusion, you realize it's the wrong size. It's too small, it's too big, or you're just trying to make it fit with another part because you're 3D printing it. Let's show you how you can fix this with the scale tool in Fusion. So in Fusion, let's say that you have a part and another and it needs to fit when you 3D print this or you're gonna have this fabricated. And you look at the design and you realize this 11 millimeters is way too small to fit in the fixture it's supposed to rest in at 20 millimeters. All right, so in this case, we could scale this whole thing up, but that may not really give you what you want. So let's take a look at some different options when it comes to scaling. When I look at a really simple design and I check the value here, we can hit measure, we can measure this edge, and it is 62 millimeters. We can scale up the entire thing really quickly. If I realize the whole thing is just not quite big enough, I can go look for modify and choose scale. What I want you to understand that's really important is this whole thing is gonna get bigger. So if we set this entire body to scale by two, that means 200%, that means twice as big, right? So we'll click okay. And so now when I click this value and come down to the measurement, it's twice as big. It was 62 roughly, and now it's 124. The challenging part is not only is that twice as big, so is this edge, so is this edge, this face, everything is twice as big. If this is solving what you want, great, you're done, wonderful. But some things I want you to understand. When you look at this timeline, you have a series of features. This is absolutely order dependent, meaning that if you make a change to something early on, it affects everything down through the timeline and vice versa. Because we scaled this at the end, going back to the original sketch, you can see that that 62 is still there because the scaling happens way down the road as far as the timeline is concerned. The scaling does not impact any of the dimensions you did previously. All right, another thing I hear from some users come up is, hey, I really wanted to only scale the lower block and not the upper block. And that makes sense. So I wanna show you how you could do that. And then I'm gonna show you a better way here in a minute. I'm gonna go back before we scaled it. And now I'm gonna hit split body. Do an S key for search, split body. I'm gonna use uh, the split across this whole thing. I'm gonna use this face as my splitting tool. Now. At this face, they're going to split apart into two bodies. I click OK. I go over to my bodies folder and I see I have two bodies. Terrific. Now it's going to be very easy to scale. There is going to be a gotcha here, though. Once we do this, we're going to make this twice as big. And I want to be really careful about where I'm scaling it. You can see that it's kind of just moving it across the middle here. I want to scale from this back corner right here. And that does a nice job of keeping it all located. I got a little bit lucky. It was able to scale correctly because this is incredibly simple. But if we had picked the lower point, you can see this is not really sitting where it's supposed to. I'm going to use the move command and we'll select this body. We'll bring it up and get it, you know, at the right location. Maybe even instead, I should just use the align command. But don't forget that in just about any slicer, you can come in and scale the entire thing by a little bit if that's what you're concerned about before 3D printing. You can do it in Fusion or you can do it in your slicer. All right, let's talk a little bit about designing something and maybe using a little bit more intelligent scaling. Let's say that you want to 3D print an adapter to allow a fixture to sit better in, you know, an existing control arm or whatever this is. Let's put in this adapter and then let's look at a cross section real quick. So what I wanted to do is I want it to have a little bit of room right there. I need to fit this part really well. Okay, so if it shrinks, this might be a little too tight if this design is really close. And if this shrinks, it's going to fit inside of the other part better, which is fine. So I don't really want to scale all of this down or up, right? So instead, what I'm going to do is go to this part, and I'm just going to increase the size of this 
hole right here. I don't want this to shrink down too much. So what I'm going to do is use the offset command. You can hit Q on your keyboard and only modify this face, right? So we're going to modify it by just a little bit. I'm going to add, how about like 0.1 millimeters. So now this diameter is now 11.2 and the upper diameter is 11. That's probably enough. If you just take a quick look out on the web, you'll find that the shrinkage for PLA, for example, can be roughly 0.3%. It's not significant. It might be just enough that if you've got a really tight fit, you might have a small issue. But other things you can control are the cooling rate and the orientation of the print. There's more things you can do in your slicer. But in Fusion 360, if all you really care about is making sure some very specific dimensions aren't too tight from shrinking, this is a great way to do it. Simply use the offset command or come back and make modifications to your sketches and features so that it fits. What if you have a design that when you look back at the sketches and features, it's just not quite accurate, right? You're, everything's off by 50%, whatever it might be. When I look at all these sketch dimensions, I realize they are, you know, half as big as they should be. If this has happened to you, the best thing you can probably do is update all your dimensions. And the way that I would do that is come up to modify, change parameters, and I would come over and create a scaling factor in the parameters list. I'll come up and create a new parameter. We'll call it scale. Make sure that you do unitless, no units, and do the expression at one, meaning for now, it's not gonna change anything. You want it to stay exactly the same by multiplying by one. So if we come and look at some of our sketches, I'm gonna look at these dimensions and I'm gonna do asterisk scale. What this is doing is multiplying it by that scale value, which at this time is one, it won't change anything. You can copy and paste. So I'd come in, being sure not to overwrite anything, and I'd copy paste on all of these. I'm even gonna do the depth and anything else that's important. I'll click OK. Now, if I update the scale factor, all of these values are gonna change. Let's go to the parameters and let's change our scale factor to something like one and a half. It's gonna multiply all of these values by one and a half. You can see the sketch still looks the same, which is good, but all of these values have increased by 1.5. So this is something else I want you to be aware of that sometimes it might serve you best if you can go back into your design, update all of your dimensions correctly. One other tip that I want you to be aware of is when you're sketching, if you are like me, you like to kind of sketch out the rough shape, and you've maybe forgotten how big this is supposed to be, and now you go to dimension this, this line that I drew is 24 millimeters. What if it was supposed to be 240? It's way off, right? As soon as I add a dimension for 240, it's gonna go nuts. That's not what I want. So there's a really cool option in the preferences. If you come up to your name, your icon in the top right, preferences and then you come to design go to scale entire sketch i love this one you've probably seen it if you've seen my other videos hit apply hit okay now when i do this at 240 it's going to redraw the rest of this sketch based on that scale so 240 it just rescales everything this one saved me a bunch of time so give that a shot let me know what you think so today we've talked a lot about different ways you can scale a model, whether you're doing it in Fusion or in your slicer for 3D printing, as well as sometimes there's only specific dimensions you really care about scaling up or down a little bit. And sometimes using that Q press pull option is the best way to do that. I hope this helps. And if you're following along, I'll see you tomorrow.